I think that I'm very confident that Vinny Pasquantino is going to have the best season of his career next year. Um, I can see that. And he was very I, good this year. Yes, he was. Um, I am confident that Salvador Perez will not decline too much as he turns 35. I think it's going to be difficult to replicate this season, but he also kind of not stumbled, but did slow down down the stretch. So I think he'll have another uh, strong season. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by Emprise Bank. If you're thinking about starting a business or know someone who is, check out Emprise Bank's SBA Loans. It's always good to know your options, and they can be your partner in possible. Back like we never left, Jordan Foote, Joel Penfield. No Josh Kaiser on this one. He is uh, being a coward for the mailbag episode, just hiding out from us <laughs> and not facing the music here. Um, all jokes aside, One World Away podcast here on KC Sports Network, brought to you by Emprise Bank, our partners in possible members, FDIC. Joel, what's up, buddy? I'm hanging in there, man. we got the World Series coming up this week. Um, I'm excited. I know that a lot of people are not or are wanting yep. to ignore it because it's Yankees Dodgers, but it's the two biggest markets, two biggest brands. It's the three biggest star, three of the biggest stars in the sport. Like, I'm excited for it. It's going to be some of the best baseball we see all year. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the mailbag, but I have a very good beer and I'm very excited to, to chop it up with you and answer some of the questions that our, our loyal listeners sent our way. Absolutely, man. We got a fantastic uh, turnout in this one, whether it was the Discord, whether it was on Twitter, um, DMs. Josh even jumped in and, and gave us some kind of yeah. ultimatum. Like, huge. He gave, he uh, gave us your own adventure. Yeah, yeah. They, they were great. So a huge thank you to um, everybody who dropped those in. And if you're on YouTube and enjoy those mailbags, then drop some comments there. Um, we'll interact with you after the fact. First time not going live in quite some time, um, unless I forgot something, but Either way, uh, let's get. Yeah. yeah, it has. It's been a while. Um, let's talk World Series. Uh, and right out of the gate, Lee 87 teeing us up with a really good one here. Are you rooting for the Yankees or the Dodgers? Joe, I think I know your answer. Are you rooting for LA? Well, rooting yes, is I'm going, a strong word. But. Rooting is a relative term, but I am picking yeah. the Dodgers. I think they win it in six or seven. This is going to be a heavyweight fight um, that I think this, this has the chance to go seven. But I'm going with the Dodgers because I want to see Otani get a ring. Like, I think it's as simple as that. Like, when you have a talent like him, he shouldn't go his whole career without winning one. And I know that there's a lot of historically great players in the history of baseball that don't have one. Ted Williams, <laughs> Mike Trout, uh, I mean, Banks, Mike Trout, that don't have them. Uh, but it's a notch in the belt for him. And it justifies his decision to leave the Angels, go to the Dodgers, win a ring. Like, I, I'm never going to fault to do for A, taking the money and B, giving yourself the best chance to win a title. Now, if the Yankees win it, like I won't like it because I don't like the Yankees, but Aaron Judge getting a ring, being the Yankee captain, like the story surrounding that is cool. Juan Soto wins his second with his second team, makes free agency a little more interesting for him. Uh, there, there's a lot of storylines that surround this. And I know that, again, like people around here and, Fans of smaller market teams are like, oh, it's just the egg. You know, I'm so turned off by it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. There are times where the Mets, Royals, World Series, or like last year, the Diamondbacks and the Rangers, like there's a time and place for those because it shows the beauty of baseball that yeah. doesn't matter how much you spend. It doesn't matter how many wins you have going into the playoffs. It's just get there and go win a ring. But there are times where the, the big brands and the big, you know, the big names getting to the World Series is good for the health of the sport. And this is what this, like the playoffs have had a lot of momentum because it's been a really good playoffs and you get two large markets, you get two big brands, people are going to be tuning in and it's like the, uh, whether you hate them or love them, you're going to be watching uh, the people that yep. say they're not going to watch. I'm sorry, I just don't believe you. I know that your guys are going to be watching Dodgers and Yankees, whether you're hate watching or not. Um, but I'm excited. I know it was a long winded answer, but uh, I'm I'm really excited for what this series is going to bring. It's going to be a ton of fun. I agree with the sentiment of it going to be a fun World Series. I have a cold take and a hot take. The cold take is um, keeping it on the cold theme. I would welcome hell freezing over before a Los Angeles Dodgers uh, World Series. Can't stand them. Don't like the brand. Don't like the team. Don't like the fan base. Um, sorry. 
uh, some of that is true with the Yankees, but the hot take is I've always kind of thought the Yankees were cool. I still think they're cool. Aaron Judge is awesome. Like there are certain so players that I'm like, like if Aaron, if the Yankees win and Aaron Judge gets his ring, we'll be like, okay, good. It'd be me. cool. Like that's yeah. awesome. Like it, it's one of those things where as I've gotten older, I don't hold that like just bitterness about, oh, it's the Yankees. Like I just don't want mm-hmm. the Yankees to win, but like I, I, I like individual that. players on the Yankees. And like Stanton getting a ring with the playoff run he's been on, and he's another Aaron one. Judge doing it, Juan Soto getting it. Like I think that's cool. And on the flip side, like Freddie Freeman getting another yeah. ring, Kershaw, even though he's not playing, like he gets another one. Uh, Otani obviously gets one. And like my, and it, it won't happen, but it's just like the way that my brain works. I'm like, this is how I think. Like the the domino effect of this being. Otani leaving the Angels and immediately winning a World Series. <laughs> I, I just yeah. I wonder if there's anywhere in Mike Trout's brain of him watching this because I know he Please. loves the game and I know he's going to be watching because I know he loves Otani and they were great teammates and they were great friends. He watches that and goes, "I got to get out of here." Like if there's any part of him seeing one of his beloved teammates, another and then like all time great, leaving and immediately winning. If there's any part of him that goes, "I need to go somewhere." And I hope that happens because I might the Mike Trout should not go his whole career l- with that hellscape of a team. Like he just mm-hmm. shouldn't. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, drop a like, subscribe on YouTube if you are so inclined. Thank you so much for tuning in um, and for continuing to listen. If you're still here after I admitted that I kind of like the Yankees a little bit, um, thank you so much. <laughs> subscribe on Apple and Spotify if that's your um, tune as well. Sky Juju in the Discord. Who are three players at the top of your shopping list for the offseason free agency or trade? Joel, drop your top three. So we talked about it a little bit uh, on our most recent episode where we did our free agent. Uh, that was so guys. fun. It was. It was a ton of fun. So I'm just going to go with three guys that I mentioned before. Um, yep. Walker Bueller. I think that is a great buy low option for this team. He's, you're not going to need him to come in and be your ace or even your second guy. It's a chance for him to kind of lay low, ball out, and then go get a multi-year deal somewhere else. It's kind of just a one-year higher gun type situation. Uh, I think that would work out pretty nicely. To Oscar Hernandez for the middle of the order, you slot him in with Vinny Pasquantino, Salvador Perez in the middle of that order. Um, huge run producer, a lot of home runs, a lot of doubles. Um, exactly what this team needs, even if there is a little bit of swing and miss. There's enough guys that don't swing and miss in this lineup. You can afford having a guy like that in there. And then I I would go and tr- make a trade for Lawrence Butler. Uh, he's an like outfielder for the Oakland days. Mm-hmm. I mentioned it on the last episode. The, the deal would be hefty because he's not a free agent until 2030, and he's a young dude uh, that maybe Oakland or Sacramento, whatever they're going to be called now, wants to build around. But like the, the deal would be at least the way it goes in the in baseball trade values, it would be Cross, Carter Jensen, and Michael Garcia. Like, it's not cheap, but it's a guy you could stick in right field for the next five-plus seasons and really tapped into something this year. So you're kind of getting in on the ground floor of a guy, just like they did with Lucas Ersig, uh, similarly. Uh, so that would be, that's where I would go. I went with two that I had, and Max Freed, I'm backing up the Brinks truck for him, and Hernandez as well, I, I copycatted you. Um, I took Josh's player that he had, and I didn't know whether to call him a low cost or like a high cost. He's kind of in the middle, I think. I um, mean, he's really not anything crazy, but I think just that's exactly why I would add him to the team, because you know precisely what you're going to get with even a little bit of upside. Um, I'd go get Michael Conforto and just stick him out there and say, hey, stabilize a little bit do your thing. You don't have to be great. If we get, you know, closer to a prime season, fantastic. If not, we know that um, the floor isn't going to bottom out. So that's not like a dream target, but I think like he's definitely the most realistic out of (laughs) the three that, that I have. Yeah, that's totally. Yep. Uh, This is a good one from Hollywood. Kent Swanson. I love that you put that name um, in there in the discord. What would be the rotation today? If it was comprised of everyone under club control, for 25 so i think we both have the same three of reagan's lugo singer correct yep bang 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 alec marsh back in the rotation i I think so i think so okay then it gets tough um i don't think it is fair 
or realistic or reasonable or, you know, logical, all of those synonyms to think Kyle Wright is just going to jump back in and be in the rotation. With that said, under club control, year plus removed from the injury, rehabbed it all year. Him or I would say like a... I think Chris Bubich is more solidified in the bullpen than Daniel Lynch is solidified in the bullpen. Um, I don't think Daniel Lynch would be good in the rotation if he went back, but I think him and Kyle Wright and maybe player X wild card would be like that number five guy. Yeah. So I, I agree with the top four. I'm going to slot Kyle Wright in there. Um, just cause I, I don't know what other options would be out there. Yeah, exactly. Talk about Bubich and, Understand that, like us talking about Chris Bubich in the bullpen, it's not us saying he can't start. No, it's, a it's not trying it's to, um, like pigeonhole the guy into a role. But I think what became abundantly clear over the last six weeks plus the playoffs is that he thrived in that role and he yeah. found something that he hadn't shown as a starter, uh, before he had Tommy John surgery and he was good pre-TJ, but it's like 16 innings. So it's hard to know if that would have lasted over the course of a full season. So I think that his best option is to stay there. I think Daniel Lynch's best option is to stay in the bullpen. Because again, he kind of found something that he hadn't shown as a starter. And when you, generally speaking, the value of a middle to look like back-end reliever And the value of a four or five starter, which is about what they are, is the same or there even is a little more value in being a high leverage reliever at this point. So it's not a bad outcome. It's actually a very good outcome for Chris Bubich to find like, you know what? He's the eighth inning guy. He's especially in the postseason. Like that's absolutely. Yes. Like it it matters a lot. So I I think the I understand people want to see him as a starter and I I wouldn't hate to see it again. Like, hey, let's see what you got. But I think he was so good in the bullpen that I don't want to move him from, especially yeah. if he wants to stay and he's like, look, man, I think this might just be the best thing for my career. Then go do it. And you had you, I feel very comfortable giving him the ball in seventh, eighth inning and then sending it off to Lucas Ersig in the ninth. I think that's where he is. Totally agree. Um, Arrow, worthy enjoyer in the Discord. What do you think MJ Melendez's future with the team looks like realistically? Joel, are you thinking like a, Platoon? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. I think you're going to let seven something. Yep. I think you, you hit him at the highest, like fifth at the low mm-hmm. and seventh. He is going to play left field against righties um, and then come off the bench as a pinch hitter um, when the lefty starts. And I think he can do well in that. And I but think like you can, have I to think, maximize him. And I think the best way to do that is just straight platoon for him. Yeah. Uh, and I don't even know if it's a play every day, even type guy at this point. Now, yep. and, and again, like it's one of those where I don't want to give up on the guy. And I know a lot of Royals fans kind of want to. I think, and, and JJ Piccolo said it, and I agree. Like, I think he, and, if by, and from everything I've heard about him and everything I've seen with him, the dude works his ass off. And it, it's, and JJ said it's unfortunate because the dude works so hard that the results haven't mm-hmm. come. It's not yeah. like he's being. Like he's not working and the results aren't coming because they would like he wouldn't be here if that were the case. Like the dude works his butt off in the field and at the play, he's doing everything he can to tinker with the swing and do whatever he can to try and maximize what he is, and the results just haven't come. So that's why I would be concerned giving up on him because what if it does click with someone else? Then you're like, oh, yeah, crap, we gave on it on him too early. And with a guy like that, that I do think has flashed legitimate big league potential. I'd rather give up on him a little bit too late than give up on him too early. Yep. Totally with you on that. Um, let's do one more before break. Brady Vaughn, one of our favorites here on Twitter. Um, assuming Michael Walker does not come back, what course of action do you foresee the Royals taking to shore up the rotation? Um, he says Reagan's Lugo and Mike Lorenzen, I would guess for three of the five starters, did not list Brady Singer um, because they could trade him and personally he would give Alec Marsh another chance. So we established that we'd give Marsh another shot. Waka, or sorry, uh, Reagan's Lugo, so there's three. I think now, they the just roll with The is he's not under club control. Mm. So this could, that could be maybe the, I, 
I wouldn't hate Michael Lorenzen on like a cheap one year deal. I can totally see him um, coming back. Yeah. Because I think he provides value in that he could kind of be your swingman type guy that start, but if they need him to go to the bullpen, then he can do that and then come back and spot start. Like I think there's some value in what he'd be able mm-hmm. to do there, providing a little bit of, of versatility to the entire staff. Uh, but that would have to be like a cheap, like one year, two and a half, three million dollar deal. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, more than that. But I think this is where you either break the bank for a, a Jack Flaherty, a Max Freed, um, try and go and get another guy kind of like, or kind of in that middle tier, like they did with Seth Lugo, or you do the hired gun Walker Bueller type for a one year deal. Mm-hmm. Yep. I had uh, a few options Flaherty and Bueller were listed. Um, I had Larice Severino listed. I had Andrew Heaney Ooh. listed. I had Martin Perez and Nick Pavetta. All very valuable. Severino was someone that I thought about after we were. I've always liked him. Always. And I was like, that would be really interesting. Because I think he's found something with the Mets and over the last couple of years as he's been healthier than I'm like, that could be, that could be pretty interesting. All right, um, we've got one of my favorite questions that doesn't have really too much to do with baseball uh, coming up right after a quick break. Looking for tickets for your next event? Tickets for Less is your number one source. Save big on every purchase when you use promo code KCSN at ticketsforless.com. You know when you discover a new binge-worthy show or a song that you play on repeat and you just have to share it with your friends so they can experience it too? That's kind of what it feels like when you discover that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service for just $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. It's such an awesome deal, there's no way you can keep it to yourself. Friends don't let friends overpay for wireless. Say bye-bye to overpriced wireless plan and switch to Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you and your squad with premium wireless plans starting at just $15 per month. And if you're worried about using your own phone or bringing along your phone number and your contacts, Mint Mobile has you covered there as well. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's deal and get three months of premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash KCSN, the number one RW. That's mintmobile.com slash KCSN, one RW. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash KCSN1RW. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Jordan Foote, Joel Penfield, rocking it here on the One Royal Way podcast. Uh, shout out to Nick Springer behind the scenes, producing, doing one heck of a job. Uh, Josh Kaiser also for giving us some good questions, even though he... Um, wasn't able to join this week's show. We're very happy that he gave us those. Um, If you guys want to participate and join in in the conversation, you can do that on Twitter. You can do it in YouTube comments. Um, Follow and subscribe, leave a review on Apple and Spotify. Um, Or jump in the Men Mobile hotline um, here at KCSN. 913-407-6524 is how you can do that. 913-407-6524. All right, Joel, um, this one's from Platinum Sombrero, and if you aren't following him, you're making a massive mistake. Absolutely impeccable um, account in in various aspects and regards here. Which Royals player has the most frustrating NFL fandom? It has to be Vinny Pasquantino. It's It's 100% Vinny Pasquantino. It's it's 100%. And we knew that before the the season. Yeah, we knew that before the year. And also, shout out, he's like doing... He's going to be like a regular on the Rich Eisen show now, which yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because they they became friends when Bobby was on the Rich Eisen show, and Vinny just like hung around with them, and then Rich realized Vinny was a Jets fan, so now they're going to do like Tuesdays or Thursdays with Vinny, uh, which is which is pretty sick. Um, yeah, it's got to be. And up until this year, I'd say Michael Massey because he's a Bears fan, but now they have mm-hmm. Caleb, and they actually have legitimate Brett like upside now. Yeah. Um, I think of, I don't know who else. Like is like openly like NFL like fan. I can't think of Bobby Wood Jr. being a, a Chiefs fan. No one has it harder than them right now. Well, he all. even said he was a Patriots fan. I'm pretty sure for a while. Oof. Well, then he would have it a little, little bit. Yeah, he's got a little rough now. But I think I think now that he's made Kansas City like home. I yeah. think he's talked about he he roots for the Chiefs. Yeah, I also love Drake. Mate, by the way, 
That's for, I do for too. I do too. Um, but I hope that the Patriots are bad for about 15 years and then they can be yeah. good again. But <laughs> you know, long, long enough post Brady, post Belichick for them to be to suck for a while and then they can come back. Yep. Uh, Royals DH on Twitter is the Diamond Sports debacle going to hamper JJ Piccolo's ability to make moves this offseason? And also, what number will Taylor Ward wear when he starts in left field for the Royals on opening day? Um, I don't think this year, no. Now, beyond that, I'm not sure, but I think for the 2024-25 offseason, they've already set up what they're going to spend. They already have everything yeah. mostly allocated. It's not going to be a big deal. I'd say no. no I don't. Th- yeah, I don't think they've. I don't think there would be any issue. I feel like that, that's something. As candid as JJ is, that was something he probably would have talked about. Uh, Good point. This, yeah, yeah. You know, at, at that post game presser of like the postseason presser of like, hey, look, with, with the uncertainty over the TV deal, like we're not sure we're going to be able to allocate. Maybe that's a conversation for after 2025 if they they struggle to get an RSN deal done or they're I know Manfred has talked about trying to get rid of RSNs and try and, and black out. So maybe that that helps everybody moving forward. But that's I'll believe that when I see it. Yeah, exactly. Um, regarding Taylor Ward, um, he's still under like club control of the Angels. Um, now, a third in baseball trade values. And if you wanted him, it would be Chandler Champlain, Javier Vaz, Tyson Guerrero would be a package. Yeah. And I would, I'd push the button on that. Um, for 25 home runs. worry about him a little bit. Uh, like, I think he's fine, uh, but I don't think he's a mountain mover and aren't even, he's a, it's like, it's like a high floor, low ceiling move. You're stabilizing yeah. for, for, yes. The next I think movers. it's a more stabilizing move, but with where the Royals are at, I'd rather try and get a needle mover. Yeah. I don't think ta- I feel like that. moves the needle enough for me. I think he's a good player, but I don't think it moves the needle enough. I like it. I like that. Um, TM Whisker on Twitter, what call-ups should we expect next year? And also three things you're optimistic about um, for 2025, not including Bobby Witt Jr. So, Joel, I have a list of players, and some of them have question marks because I'm like, uh, maybe if I squint. Um, I'm going to let you rattle off yours, and then I'll see how many I have left. Um, I think Gavin Cross is number one on that list, most likely. I think Champlain is on that list. Um, I think of who else? I know he kind of debuted this year, so Tyler Gentry may get another shot, but I'm not. I have that. <laughs> that. Yep. Um, maybe a Tyson no, Guerrero or Eric Sarantola. I had Sarantola on mine. Yeah, there's not a lot else. Like I, okay. What is the percentage chance that Cags makes his debut in 2025? Zero. Well, like five, three. Yeah, I'd say like five. And like if if it clicks, like maybe, but I I'd put them more likely at the beginning of 26 than 25. So I had Noah Cameron on my list. Oh, um, Noah Cameron. I missed. I was I was just kind of shooting from the hip. Yeah, I have Steven Zoback with a question mark. He'd have to accelerate Ooh. really quickly. Um, for it to happen and like show up, I don't think he'd have to I accelerate would. that quickly. I don't. I'd have to show up and show up, but I wouldn't put that past him to do it. No, no, and it, he'll probably go back to double it for a little bit. But the dude shoved all year and up upped his game when he got to double A. Yeah. Makes you think he he's going to be good pretty quick. And I, I don't think he'll be a starter. I think he'll be a reliever, but he could be like an elite reliever, sneaky yeah. dude to watch. And he's a dude that might move. Super fast. He didn't pitch this year, but he's a dude that I'm fascinated by, and that's LP Longevin. Yeah. Uh, out yeah, of yeah. Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah. The fastball metrics for this guy are ridiculous. It's probably the best fastball in the system mm-hmm. based on shape and metrics and stuff. If he goes, like, I would just send him to high A and not mess around. He could be a dude that could move really, really fast because he's a reliever yeah. only, and those dudes tend to move quick. That could be a name to watch in, in 25 if everything clicks. I've got one more that I don't think is going to happen. I absolutely would not bet on it, but because he played a few different positions and has the um, mature approach at the plate, I could see Javier Vaz getting yeah, maybe... Yeah. It it would be hard to to do, but I think that he would be like the the bottom uh, option. Yeah, I I could see that. Like if a if a spot opened on the bench for like a utility yeah. type guy, it would I take agree. something else to happen. But I yeah 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 I agree. What are you optimistic about next season? 
Um, I am still optimistic about the starting rotation. Uh, oh, and still being good. Like I think Cole Reagan's upped his level, and yeah. like, and I still think there's more for him to reach. Um, I am optimistic about the bullpen. I think they found the mix that they've been desperately looking for at the back end, which is going to help secure a lot more games. Um, because the Royals could have easily won ninety plus this year if they yeah. didn't have the so many question marks in the middle of the year. And I'm. Hmm. One more thing. Honestly, I think it's Michael Massey. Like he again, kind of upped his level this year. Uh, I think he he looked a lot better, a lot more comfortable in a few different spots in the lineup. Uh, he showed he can lead off if they need him to. I don't think they want him too long term, but he showed that he can. Uh, even if his like approach to hitting is not necessarily conducive to the lead off prototype, but he looked comfortable in that spot. He hit the ball well in the postseason. Um, you know, if he's able to stay healthy, which is obviously a big if because we've seen it for a couple of years now, um, especially with it being a back thing, um, I think he he proved he can be an everyday guy for the Royals. Like it, the the talent level is a yeah. guy that can be that. I think that I'm very confident that Vinny Pasquantino is going to have the best season of his career next year. Um, I can see that, and he was very I, good this year. Yes, he was. Um, I am confident that Salvador Perez will not decline too much as he turns 35. I think it's going to be difficult to replicate this season, but he also kind of not stumbled, but did slow down down the stretch. So I think he'll have another uh, strong season. And then I am confident that two of Angel Zerpa, Chris Bubich, Daniel Lynch will be a mainstay in the bullpen. I'm not trying to pencil in all three or, you know, Sharpie, but I think two of them will be borderline dudes in 2025 well i think all three could be mainstays in the bullpen it's just they could be definitely like i think daniel lynch in that multi-inning role it's right up his alley could be legit um and if you need him to get left like two lefties out in in a seventh inning i think he could do it bubich having the reverse splits makes him comfortable to put in in any spot and serpa throwing absolute fuel at the back. I'm like, oh, okay, that looks like when he's in the zone with his fastball and his sinker, dog. it is like, oh, damn. Like, there is, and if he's able to build on like any sort of change up or something to get him off of the slider, there's a reason why, like, my our buddy Alex Duvall said, like, there's Kelvin Herrera vibes. Like, he has that sort of, he's also 25 velo, the juice, and he's young. And he just turns 25 gotcha. at the end of September. And and I think there was an element for Zerpa, too, of like fully adjusting to the yes. reliever thing because he was a starter for so long. And they tried, to, they tried to make him a starter for a long time, and it just didn't work. And they let him get some spot starts, and they moved him to the bullpen. This year, it was just like, no, you're going to go to the bullpen, and you're going to throw one inning. And he figured it out down the stretch after a little reset. He got to figure it out, and he he became a problem for this team, which in like the best way because you brought him out, and it's just like, oh, kind of an unassuming dude. Ninety eight, bam! I'm like, oh shit, okay. We did have a, a duplicate, but I did want to thank Carter Kuderna on Twitter for the question about which prospects you think realistically have a chance to make their debuts. Um, I think you'll you'll see a couple guys like uh, the Tyler Gentry that maybe come back up that made their debuts, and then. A few of the guys we listed earlier that are either in double A and I think will progress pretty quick, um, or the triple A guys that have just been waiting for an opportunity that usually early season injury, something like that can can open it and up. I, I'm curious about the a few guys that maybe we're not thinking about that pop and like really kind of force the Royals hand. Yeah, yeah. Um and those, those are, are my favorite situations. situations. So like yeah. honestly, and I know like the last name, I'm just gonna kinda roll with it, like Ben. <laughs> Like he, like I think there is a big league pitcher in there, and if he ups his level next year after kind of a rocky go at it, yeah, um, in double A. Yeah. But again, that jump from high to double A is tough, and he's still young for the level. And Carter Jensen, like the the play discipline and the batted ball profile, if he's able to build on, you know, uh, if he has a solid fall league and is able to build on that, like he could knock on the door of the big leagues by August. Like he, could, I think he could be that type of guy. Um, and maybe he is the flirt with top 100 list that Josh has been clamoring for for two years. Uh, 
but I, I do think he is he's someone to watch out for. I, I really I I I've tr- I know I've traded him in a couple of our sims, but I do believe the player is legit. <laughs> You're like even well, though I'm upset about no, I'm just messing with you. It's because the value, well, like, it just hey, catches it's up just, a lot. Sometimes it's the cost of doing business, man. Like yep. it's just kind of what it is. You have to, and this team has to ID who the catcher of the future is between mm-hmm. him and uh, Blake Mitchell. Like who's it going to be? Because I don't think both are going to be in on the big league roster whenever it's time. Mm-hmm. One of them is going to really? be in another uniform. I don't think so, um, unless they move one of them off of catching. I think Jensen moves off of catching eventually. I think that would be. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, I, I think Blake, for what he showed and everything we heard, is that he is very very good behind the plate. And while Jensen has improved from what we heard early in his career, like I think MJ Melendez like, vibes. Mm-hmm. I think there is some of that. Now, if they go to ABS, then maybe you just like Carter Jensen sure. catch because it doesn't matter. But I'm okay with. I think he's enough of an athlete for you to tell him, yeah, go. You go play left field like now, and not yeah. try and figure it out at the big league level, and just go mash homers. Mm-hmm. Totally with it. Um, speaking of doing business, Lee eighty seven with a really good question in the Discord. He has a couple back to back here. Um, how do you think the Guardians, Twins, and Tigers look heading into next season? Are marginal upgrades enough to keep the Royals near the top, or will they also be looking at being better teams as well? Um, Joel, if you had to, and we can peel this back, rank how confident you are in those three teams heading into the off season, how would you rank them? I think I put the Tigers one. Really? They showed no, a lot, I, man. I'm like, floored. Like, I I was thoroughly wow. impressed by what they did down the stretch. I didn't Holy see it coming. Smokes. But when you think about what they're able to do with their staff, now they need to get a couple more starters. Yep. But Scooble is insane. Best pitcher in baseball type guy. Going to be a unanimous Cy Young and showed out in the playoffs when they needed him to. I think Casey Mize is a good middle of the rotation. Um, they need to fill a couple holes because like, they can't do the bullpenning thing all the time. Casey Mize is a free agent. No. I've, I'm, I'm working he, to confirm. I think he's got two years. Okay. Z debuted in 20. Mm, club option. So uh, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. It's a uh, 3.1 million. Yeah, he's he's not going anywhere. And the Carry on. lineup does enough. Of, like Riley Green up the level this year. Cole yeah. Keith did. Um, Torkelson stinks, but they can yeah. figure that out. It's first. And they have a little bit of help on the way. Like Detroit's farm system has. Yeah, JC, JC Young came up this year. Um, whoever came in and played shortstop after Baez got hurt. Oh, um, I don't know why I'm blanking. Trey Sweeney. Yeah. Trey Sweeney. Yeah. Loved him in the draft a couple of years ago. Um, so they, like they have enough pieces there and that bullpen is nasty. Yeah. Like they, they just figured it out. And I just don't know how much longer the guardians can sustain some of what they do. Like it is very reliant on all of their pitching. And obviously Jose Ramirez is a hall of famer and is like awesome. But yep. there's some there's some spots in that lineup that I'm like I just don't know how they're going to be able to sustain it for too long. I think Vote is a great manager, but there is some elements of being born on third and thinking he hit a triple that yeah. I wonder how much he is able to elevate them based on what Tito did before Tito Francona. Mm-hmm. So I just I have some questions about them. I think the Twins are just probably broken. Cheap. Like, I think first. that type of collapse, what happened to them, I don't know how you come back from it. And especially because they kept everyone around, like, they didn't try and shake anything up. Correa has significant injury, like, injury history. Royce Lewis, as talented as he is, has a lot of that. Uh, their starters, like, Pablo Lopez regressed a bunch. Is that just a one year thing or is the sign of things to come? And beyond, behind him, like I think Joe Ryan's good, but he's got some arm issues. Bailey Ober's okay, you know, pretty good. Simeon Woods Richardson, I don't think you can rely on. And besides Duran, I just don't know. Like yeah. they there are a ton of question marks with, with Minnesota and the psyche of that team. And I didn't even mention Buxton, who's a walking injury. So <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I think the Royals probably slot in like I think Tigers and then Royals Guardians can probably like flip flop and then wins and then obviously the White Sox are a disaster. We don't need to talk about that. I I think it's gonna be potentially run back 
maybe the Royal. So coming into the year, the, I, I thought the Tigers would be about 500 frisky, annoying. Like I thought I was a little bit higher on them than a lot of people were. And they were better with that run than I expected. I think they are the wild card of the division because they have so much room to improve still. And like how yeah. they played in the second half, obviously isn't, that was a toward pace, but can they get a little bit of that magic? Minnesota, I I think I, I just don't think Minnesota is going to be much better next season. I don't think Cleveland's going to be much better, but they were, you know, a tad bit higher, there obviously, than Minnesota. I think Cleveland, everything you said is valid, a thousand percent. There's a little bit of raise, like, I'm just going to keep siding with them until they give yeah, me Yeah, and like me talking about the Cleveland in that way, like, I think they're still a wild card. Yeah, I don't think they're yeah. 94 wins. Like, sure. I don't think they're that. Yep. I think they win 89, 90 games next season. I think Detroit has enough room to have another good year. Um, and then Minnesota, they, I think, will be in the mix, quote unquote. But I don't think they're going to be, um, unless things break really right for them, a, a playoff team. So that's where I'm, I'm at. I mean, obviously, I'm very, I'm very optimistic about what the Royals could be in 25. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think... Like, I think the two top favorites for the division next year are going to be the Tigers and the Royals Mm -hmm. with the Guardians sliding in behind. And it'll be like, I mean, I'm not any, I'm like a handicapper or anything, but like I would put it at Tigers plus 350, Royals plus 450, Guardians plus 600. Take it to the bank. And then right now, it's probably around plus a thousand. And then the White Sox odds closed. Yeah, White Sox like plus four thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lee eighty seven, another good one of the twenty twenty COVID season. They didn't have the minor league system and said they used the in house development. Um, this type of simulated and more hands on environment seemed to have yielded a lot of positive results for the Royals. Do you think Major League Baseball? I'm sorry, Minor League Baseball. Sorry, let's try that again. Do we think Major League Baseball needs to consider revamping Minor League Baseball all the way from less teams and games into more developmental pieces. Um, So this is a very fascinating. I'm very, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought about, this is the one question I thought the hardest about, because I'm like, there are so many elements to this. I do the, for what it's worth. Yes. They don't have like the, like the true, like in-house thing that they did, that teams did like the alternate sites, I think is what they called them, but they do have, they still have the complex and they have the like, and if you watch throughout the year, you'll see guys go on the development list. That's where they aren't with the minor league affiliate. They go back to Arizona to the complex and they go play backfield games and they work with the coaches that are at the complex to hone in their stuff. So there is still that hands-on development and you still have traveling and rotating coaches that, go to all of these teams. It's kind of what Alex Zomo did for a long time. It's what JJ did as a front office guy. Like there, there is that in all of these systems. I actually think major league baseball made a massive mistake by taking away rookie ball and just making it the complex because yep. that's a level that a lot of guys needed mm. like that short season affiliated ball, because now like pitching at low A is awful right now and even high eight to some degree unless you're like a really like high floor college guy a lot of dudes struggle and like to find the play that's why i have a hard time with some of the pitching stuff in the low minors i have a lot of problems with some hitting stuff in the low minors because these dudes don't know where the ball is going and hitters are just trying to put anything in play just to like you know get the practice of just yeah. hitting the ball otherwise they're taking a bunch of walks so that's why like some of the blake mitchell numbers are like man i don't know what like I want to see him move up a couple levels before I really see what happens. an assessment on him. Because yeah. at, obviously as you move up, the guys get better. You guys are more in the strike zone. You have a better idea. For now, like it's just so hard to tell. So I actually think Major League Baseball needs to go back in the other direction and do that. And also, and this is a, a more sentimental piece, but like a lot of these communities that have minor league teams, that's the only professional baseball they have near them. Mm-hmm. So that it's a way for them to like dads to take their sons to a ball game or a family to go out to a ball game or just someone that that loves base like the the old guy that wants to just go to the ballpark 
spend eight bucks and sit there and keep score and watch it. Sure. Like they're, they're, and the Royals are for a lot of these places, like Columbia, South Carolina, there's not a major league team that's super close. And you'd have to go to Florida or go up to the DMV area to catch a game. Davenport, Iowa, you got to go to Chicago or Kansas City or Minneapolis. And those places are all, like Iowa specifically is blacked out from eight major league teams because of blackout restrictions. Springdale, Arkansas, you got to go to Dallas or Kansas City. That's a three and a half hour drive either way. So for a lot of these places, like that's the like that's the place where you can go and watch baseball in some of its purest form. In some of these smaller ballparks, you can have interactions with players and you can take your kid and sit down right by the dugout where you wouldn't be able to do it at Kauffman Stadium. So I think it's still super important to have the minor, have minor league baseball in a lot of these places. And I think it would be a disservice to those communities and to the players to to get rid of it. Ditto to everything you said. And I, I think just my two cents continue to invest in people who care, continue to invest in being inquisitive and, and curious about the development aspect and put funds in the right places, put time in the right places. And some of that takes care of itself. So revamp the systems, revamp the processes, but keep the um, overall shell the same is how I would do it. So um, very good question. Probably my favorite one there. I'm going to keep the final four in here um, for the last few minutes. Josh's are all lumped together and then we'll jump to Duncan England's question from the discord. Um, number one from Josh, snap your fingers to guarantee one of these things happened in 2025. Vinny Pasquantino plays 150 games. Michael Massey is the biggest all-star snub among second basemen. Michael Garcia has a 105 WRC plus at leadoff. MJ Melendez has a 325 on base percentage. Or Bobby Witt Jr. has a K rate under 15. Joel, what's your elevator pitch? I've d- I debated between two and three here. But I think I'm going to go with Massey being the biggest all-star snub because mm-hmm. I think that means he ups a level from what he did even this year and is closer to like a 110 to 115 WRC plus guy, which at second base is very massive, good. Yeah. Um, along with playing high level defense. That means he's hitting and he's walking and he's he's taking, you know, taking the next steps to be a middle of the order bat for this team, which I still think he has capability to be. It sounds, maybe this is asking too much, but I just don't think a 105 WRC plus in the leadoff spot is good enough for Garcia. Like, I just, I, I, he was so bad this year. So obviously that's like a 40% jump, but I still don't know if it's good enough for what the Royals need as the guy to protect Bobby Wood Jr. I give it to Garcia. He was worth 2.1 wins as an 83 in 2023. The caveat to that defensive I kind of flipped are not as kind. To, do, to be fair, because I had a feeling you were going to pick that one. I want to know if you flip the coin for this one. This is kind of where I really got to thinking. Um, Michael Walker resigns three for 50. Cole Reagans pitches over 160 innings. Brady Singer has a 3 5 ERA. Lucas Erseg converts 35 of his 43 saves. That was a very interesting um, outline there. Or Chris Bubich will uh, start 20 games. I think it's Reagans pitching over 160. Really? Okay. Um, because I think it. Can I guess I think people still have a lot of doubt in their mind of his durability because of the two yeah. TJs. So he went, how many innings did he throw this year? Why am I blanking? I think there's up over 180, but I want to make sure that I get the right number. It was 186. 186 and a third. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it, it's another year of, okay, he's a legitimately durable starter. And if Cole Reagan throws 160 innings, and is able to kind of up a level from what he did this year. Like we're talking about a guy that can legitimately win the Cy Young. Yeah. I think he, I think he has that much upside. He's going to finish in probably the top five or six this year. Yep. Um, he'll be up there with Scooble to win it next year. If he does it. again. I went with Waka three for 50 because I think I would probably give him three for 60 and I wouldn't be happy with it, but I would accept it. Um, yeah. Brady Singer had a 3.71 ERA this year, and the peripherals were not that good. But the jump to 3.5 isn't too crazy. And I, I had um, Reagan's taking the bronze position on that podium. So I would just bring Michael Walker back. I think that although I'm not sure he's as good as he was this season, and I don't know if it'll hold up, um, if you get 80% of that health-wise and um, production-wise, then, then you're in good shape. 
So the second one I picked was actually Ursig because it, again, it solidifies the the back. I get so much nerd. I, I went into how many playoff teams this year, last year, the year before had thirty plus save opportunities, had this many convert. I there was no discernible correlation. But with that said, I totally agree with you that if he's getting in those many opportunities, that means the Royals are in a good spot. So yeah. I'm with it. Um, final run here before Duncan's question. Jack Caglione ends the season in AAA with a 7.25 OPS. Same thing for Gavin Cross. Um, Noah Cameron has a 4.5 ERA and five big league starts. Ben Kuderna ends the season in AAA with a 4.5 ERA. Or Carter Jensen has a 500 slugging percentage all year. I think that my pick is easily Carter Jensen. He had a 3.82 in a low A in 22, 3.63 in high A in 23. 435 in a high this year than a 480 once he got to double A. If he's hitting 500 um, on that slugging percentage all year, then he's knocking on the door and being like, I- I'm actually here in the big leagues type stuff. Yeah, that that's if he slugs 500 in double A, which is a he- that's not awesome. heavy league. With uh, the approach he has, we're, dude. We're, yeah. we're talking about a guy that that's going to be knocking on the door of the big leagues. Like, I'll be honest. If Cags ends the year in AAA, yes. But if Cags is a 725 OPS, I might be a little disappointed. That was my thought. Or like what I think he could be. If Gavin yeah. Cross is a 725, like that's probably about what you can expect from him at the big league level. Um, but I, I couldn't accept, like, I think Cags is going to live in AAA no matter what. I think they're just going to send him right to AA and sink or swim, uh, which is what they should do with a guy that played in the SEC. But a 725 OPS would mean he's striking out a lot. And he's yeah. not getting to the power the way that he needs to. Uh, yeah. That would have me ring in some alarm bells for what I think he could be. Final one, Duncan Anglin. Dark horse names from the miners who could contribute next year. I have one guy that popped up on my radar. Um, Jacob Wallace. He is a relief pitcher. He's not ranked on pipeline. Um, last year in double A, 4-2 ERA in 49 innings. He struck out over 10 per nine, but he walked seven per nine. This year, the ERA was just under four, um, three six four x fip, twelve point two strikeouts per nine. He cut the walks down to four point four, so still a lot. Um, he turned twenty six in August, so he's old for double A. Um, really needs to be at the big league level. I was kind of reaching for a dark horse since we mentioned a lot of guys, but mid high nineties fastball, cutter, slider, maybe see what happens. Yeah, I think the dude that I mentioned earlier, LP Longevin, I think is someone to watch out. Love that one. Like he can move, he can move really fast because of the way the fastball plays. Like he's going to, he's like they should just send him right to high A because it would be yeah. just like bullying, comical to send him yeah. to low A, and it, but it would be bullying to keep him in high A for longer than about a month and a half. Yeah. And then if he goes and shoves in double A too, like just get the guy to the big leagues. I think he could be that good. Gotta love it, man. Well, Joel, thank you for jumping on. Nick, thank you for producing. Um, everybody who dropped the question, Josh, or otherwise, whether it was a listener um, or our compositor there, a massive thank you for that. Hit the like and subscribe on your way out. Drop a five-star review on Apple or Spotify. Um, we'll be back next week with another episode. So until then, take care, stay safe. We'll talk to you then.